What's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a fantastic day. How about you, Alex? How are you doing? I'm doing great. You have a good day at school? Yep. All right. Glad to hear it. So we got a couple topics, but before we get to that, what are we going to do? We're going to say... Do some shout-outs! So who are we shouting out today? Some new subscribers that we got notified of. Shouting out to Kenneth, Jeff, Poquito, Brad, and Gabe. I'm really, we're really happy you joined us. We're really happy you joined us. Thanks for being here. Uh, so the topics we have today, the first one is, it's going to be about plastic decor. Why you shouldn't buy it. Um, and or, or use it, period, of any kind. And we're also... I have a special shout out to G Family who asked for me to uh, do this topic uh, today, which anyone at any time is is free to request me to do a a video or a topic on something. And G Family asked me to um, help figure out if a fish is sick or not before you buy, which I'm I'm sure is something we all worry about buying a fish that's already sick just to bring it home and watch it slowly die. But the first thing that we're going to talk about is plastic decor. Alex, why should we not use plastic plants and plastic decor in our aquariums? Because your fish could body bash. Body bash, right. And, and what is body bashing? It's where your fish has an itch somewhere on its body and it bashes to some like sharp plants that are plastic and it could cut itself over. Right, so what what he's saying is if you, most people have seen this, uh, fish can do it for many reasons, but the main reason a fish would body bash is if it has an itch. Obviously it doesn't have fingers like we do, so what it would do is swim up to an object and whip its body uh, along it to get the itch. Now obviously if it does that with live plants, you don't have to worry about your fish damaging itself. Now, if it does it against a plastic decor, plastic plants, those are hard. They have sharp edges. Your fish can cut itself open and use your imagination from there. I am completely against plastic decor. Yes, it does look great, but it, it isn't something that, that you should use. I mean, if, if you don't want to do plants, just don't even have anything in there at all. Yeah, just have fish, and there are some people that do that. Uh, so, and that's it. That is literally my only reason why you shouldn't have plastic decor. It's because it can harm the fish. Um, I'm a plant guy. We all know that. Let's go with plants. Now, we are in a hurry. You got to go to dance class. So we're going to pause this video and get back in a minute to talk about how to determine if a fish is sick, how to avoid it, how to avoid it all together, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, you'll see me in a few seconds. Um, I'll see you guys in like an hour. I got to take him. He's going to, what kind of dancing are you doing today, man? I don't know. You have no idea? No. Well, I did read on the schedule that it's uh, sock, sock, silly sock day, dance day. What kind of dancing do you do in silly socks? Just a regular dance. Oh, okay, regular dance. Oh, hey, real fast. Last time I said I was going to dress my dog up as a gingerbread man, and I did it. Myers, come here. <laughs> Myers. He's a gingerbread man. The gingerbread man. Oh, <laughs> let's get his hood over his ears. <laughs> I'm a gingerbread man. Yeah, look at how happy he is wearing this outfit. Yeah, he's definitely not happy. Wait, no, I said he's happy. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's happy. Yeah. Yeah, he's totally happy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Uno momento, por favor. We'll bye be bye. right back. Bye-bye. All right, I'm back. Did you miss me? I knew it. Okay, so to get to the second half of the topic for the video today, it's how to... Uh, notice things that might be wrong with the fish before you purchase it. I'm going to bring a few things up, the most common, and then I'm going to give you 
a way to avoid it altogether. Now, the most uh, common issue that you'll run into with fish at huge uh, chain stores like PetSmart and Petco is a swim bladder disease. Now, this uh, this happens from a fish fish not being acclimated to the water. Now, when you go in there, you see that they're in a bag and they're the bag is sitting in the tank and it's being acclimated but what it's being acclimated to is it's being acclimated to the temperature of the water it's not being acclimated to the actual water itself so they wait 30 minutes and then just dump it into new water it doesn't matter what you have not only does it need to be acclimated to the temperature but it should also be acclimated to the water meaning you take a little bit of the water out of the bag that it's in and then add a little bit of the tank water in there over and over. Now, because they don't do this, it shocks the fish. And if they get shocked like that with water that has parameters that are completely different, they get swim bladder disease. Now, uh, I've mentioned this before, but what a swim bladder is, um, it's, it's a pocket where they can um, suck in and release gas. This is what helps them swim up and down and forwards without having to use their fins. Um, now, whenever they have swim bladder disease, uh, there's a couple ways you can tell. One is as if they're swimming vertically with their nose up or if they're swimming with their nose down. And the reason they're swimming this way is because they're extremely uncomfortable because their swim bladder is, is infected and it's Essentially, it's messed up their equilibrium. They can't hold themselves uh, level. Uh, so that's one of the first things that I look for when I go into a fish store. Is I'm looking to see if they're steadily swimming with their nose up or their nose down. Now, I, I mean this constantly. Not, not like you just saw one like you know point up for a moment and then went back horizontally. Like it is stuck in that position. It's literally stuck in that position because it's sick. Um, another thing to look out for when you're buying a, uh, a fish is a, a asymmetrical body shape. So if you were to look and draw an imaginary line down the center of the fish and one side of the fish looks different from the other side, should be a mirror image. If anything is off, one fin is smaller than the other or it, it just looks peculiar in a way there's something going on there okay so look out for that also look out for lumps bumps concave stomachs and blowed out stomachs um, another big one is glass surfing if you uh, if you may or may not have ever seen this before but if you ever go into a fish store uh, glass surfing is where a fish gets right up against the glass and swims up and down while touching the glass as fast as it can over and over and over and over. It's doing this for several reasons. One, it's either extremely sick or it's extremely stressed out. Either way, it's not good uh, because fish can die just from stress. They get too stressed, they'll just call it quits. Um, you, you know, so... <laughs> Uh, look out for that and also fish that are hiding. If the fish has been acclimated properly and it doesn't look peculiar and it's swimming around and being active, there's a good probability that this that fish is okay. Now, you see a fish that you're interested in but it's hiding in the back, low to the ground, and it's just not moving or doing anything, it's stressed, or it's sick, one of the two. Don't don't pick it. Now, I'm going to give you a fish hack. A fish hack to avoid all of this without having to sit here and try to identify if a fish is sick or not. Um, so, like at PetSmart and Petco or any fish store, they have shipment days. Find out what days those shipment days are and show up and buy the fish before they've dumped them into the tank. You, you see what I'm saying? So you go there and you're like, okay, I, I want a bunch of uh, black skirt tetras. 
they're acclimating them to the te temperature. There's six in that bag. Say, I want all those fish in that bag. Give it to me as is, and you take it home, and you acclimate it properly. Acclimating it to temperature and slowly swapping out the water. Okay, now those are my biggest pieces of advice with observation. I also take it a step further, and uh, no, no employee is going to tell you you can't do this. If they tell you you can't do this, don't buy a fish. I'll take test strips with me, and I'll also take my TDS meter. I'll read the TDS to see uh, you know, how, how much dissolvables are in the water altogether. Um, anything 500 and over, there's too much of something going on in there. And then I'll also use testing strips and read to see if there's ammonia or nitrites in there. If it's got either one of those, the fish is already sick. Um, I have yet to have an employee ever tell me, no, you cannot test the water. If one did tell me that I couldn't, they're going to lose my business. I may buy plants there, but I'm not going to buy fish if they're not going to, if they're going to prevent me from testing the water to see if they're even sitting in healthy water, period. That's a huge red flag. All right, now some may say that that's I'm going a little overboard, but you know, I've been doing this for a, for a while and there's nothing more heartbreaking than buying a fish, bringing it home just to watch it die within a few days or a week later. And yes, uh a lot of these uh big uh, chain stores will replace a fish that's going to die. But why go through that? Why go through watching it die and have them replace it when you can identify certain things from the beginning and then double check by actually testing their water. So those are uh, those are my big suggestions for today, all the topics that uh, I've got covered. And like I said, um, I am now, I, I rely on a lot of you. Uh, you know, if you have questions, give me a topic to cover. Um, I am waiting on some new plants, so I'll always be covering plants because uh, Plant Bonanza, oh, let me show you the um, devil's ivy real fast before I let you go. This thing is growing like wild. I mean, just a few days ago I did a video and it's going nuts. And the back end where I wasn't too sure about, those brown spots are now forming roots. The entire thing is starting a whole new plant. It is doing fantastic. Pothos are awesome. And then I got a bunch of that purple ivy going across the top too. I'm not sure if it's converting right or not. When I'm positive that I'm, I've done it correctly, I'll show you. But there's no doubt in my mind that this devil's ivy is happy. So... Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Leave a comment. Say hi. Any new subscribers, say what's up. I hope you had a fantastic day. And like always, if you're having a bad day, you're down in the dumps, get up and do something about it. We'll catch you next time.